Hi guys, my name is Cash and welcome back to some more Turbo Miata content here on the channel. In today's video, we're going to be working on our cheap eBay Turbo and opening up the wastegate port so it could flow more exhaust. And we're also going to be porting the Turbo so it matches the manifold better. And I'll be showing you techniques to port your Turbo and your manifold for better flow. Better flow here will allow you to have a faster spooling turbo and better flow to your wastegate will prevent boost creep and make it easier to manage boost, especially on these cheap turbos. Let's get right into it. All right, so first things first, we need to go ahead and get the turbo off of the car so I could access both the wastegate and the turbine housing here to modify those. So we're gonna start pulling this thing apart. So taking a look at the turbine housing here, we have some little bumps in there that aren't really a big deal. They're pretty smooth, but I'm still going to knock them down. Those were just from when this thing was cast. And then the more important part to me right now is that wastegate hole right there which is a pretty sharp transition to get into that hole. And that hole itself also is pretty small compared to the flap, which I'm gonna be showing you shortly. Right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and take off all the bolts that hold on this wastegate housing. Now, some turbos will have a integrated wastegate housing, but since this is a cheap one, this is what we got here. So we're gonna go ahead and take this off, and then I'll show you what we're gonna open up in here to allow more flow through that wastegate. All right, and now this housing is free here. And we could see that there's an outline there where this flap actually sits over that wastegate hole. And there's a ton of wasted space right there. Just take a look at that there. You could really tell just the crazy amount of wasted space where that flap is just so much bigger than that hole. So we're gonna be opening that up. Another thing that I think is playing a factor with my boost control issues here is when this thing opens, the part that gets the farthest away from that port is actually the part that's not even covering the port itself. What I mean by that is when that flap opens, the part that's actually covering that port is moving less far away than the part that's not covering anything. The next thing that I'm doing here just to make this a little bit easier to work on is removing my turbine housing. To do that, there are just all those bolts there. You remove those and the housing will come off. All right, so we're getting to the last couple bolts here to get this thing off and it gets a little bit tricky because you sort of have to pull the housing off as you loosen these up to get clearance to get them off. And there we go. That's what makes the magic happen right there. So I don't mess this up and remove all the ash that's gonna show me where I need to machine, I'm gonna go ahead and use this ice pick to just sort of scribe a mark where I need to remove material. And that will give me a pretty good visual guide on how far I could go. I do want to leave just a little bit of material there to make sure that the flap still closes all the way because if you go too much you're in big trouble and then you're basically going to need a new housing or a bigger flapper and that's going to be a pain so do be careful removing material. It's tempting to remove the very maximum that you could but it's probably not a great idea risk wise because if you screw up it's going to be a big screw up. Another thing that we're going to be working on here is this gasket fits pretty nicely on the manifold height wise this way. So what I'm going to do is open up this right here so it matches over towards the manifold right there and that will just provide a little bit of a better match between the manifold and this turbo housing and make it so we get a little bit better flow coming out of the exhaust. Now I'm getting ready to grind this thing out and you need a few things when you're going to do this. You want a die grinder, an air one or an electric one. This one's an air one. Some carbide cutting bits, hearing protection, uh, breathing protection since you're going to be making a ton of dust and some glasses to protect your eyes. The technique here is really to just let the bit do the work, keep it spinning at a high speed and also keep it moving over the material. You don't want to press down too hard and you don't want to keep the bit in the same place for too long because then you're going to end up digging a hole that's going to be pretty hard to correct. So 
keep that thing moving, take your time, and just gently go at your housing until you get it to where you want it to be. All right, I've removed a lot of material, which you could see right here. And this wastegate port is to the point where I'm pretty happy with it. I do have to go through and do the inners a little bit more to open up that shape all the way through. But I'm pretty happy with that. I don't want to remove too much more just in case I go a little bit too much. And right now, I think I've almost doubled the flow through this. Because before we were at about 0.84 inches and right now we're at about 0.12. So that's a lot more area for air to flow and we're going to be in pretty good shape here. Here is the final product for the wastegate port. As you can see this is much better. And then if I could get a good nice shot in here. You could see that I was able to sort of transition down into that wastegate hole. I angled it so the flow could easily get in there as it's traveling out of the exhaust manifold into the port for this turbine housing right here. And that should just help direct flow to the wastegate and help me control boost even better. Next up, I'm gonna go ahead and open up this this way just a tiny bit and also round out those corners just to once again smooth out the flow as it comes out of the manifold and into this housing. The last thing that you want to do to really get the most out of this job is go ahead and go over your work with a Dremel with a sanding disc. This will just help polish up your surface and make it a little bit smoother, whereas the carbide bits do rough up the surface a little bit. So this will just help smooth everything out and get you in really good shape. The last thing that I'm going to do here, because I actually started to melt an exhaust gasket that was between this and the manifold, is take this file and just flatten out the surface. There's some metal left over from when that other gasket started to melt, and I'm just going to get that off of there. The goal is to be able to run no gasket, so I want this super flat, I want the manifold super flat, and then I'll use some copper gasket maker, that's just like a spray that you put on there, and then I'll run no gasket, and we shouldn't have leaks, and we won't have to worry about gaskets leaking or breaking. I just went ahead and did the same thing over that wastegate port just to get any burrs off there so the flapper will sit nice and flush and I think we're in really good shape the last thing is to just blow this out with some compressed air get as much of that dust out as we could you could even spray it out with brake cleaner or something like that and then we'll be all set to go ahead and get this all back together and back on the car. So there were a few small areas that I wanted to work on on this manifold like rounding over that inner edge there to help flow out to the turbine housing and there's just a tiny tiny bit that I might be able to open up on this but there's not that much room left on the turbo to keep opening up and removing metal so I'm actually going to leave this thing as is. The last thing that I do need to do on the manifold is just flatten it out. Once again there's a little bit of residue from that old um, gasket that got sort of melted onto there so I'm going to take that off and then we're just going to put the turbo back on and run it. The key to doing this on both a turbo and a manifold is getting your file really flat on that surface and keeping pressure on the middle of the file. You don't want to be putting pressure out here where you're going to be rocking off of the manifold and rounding it off. You really want to stay in the middle and just sort of go back and forth like this and just flatten that thing right out. We started out 0.435 inches, which is an area of 0.59 inches squared. And then when we were done and had that thing all opened up, the radius was up to 0.54, which gives us an area of 0.92. So that's a pretty big improvement. Here you could see the differences in wastegate port size before and after. And you also could see the differences in turbine housing inlet size before and after. Now, once again, the whole goal of this is reducing restrictions in the exhaust system to allow your exhaust to flow more freely through your system and therefore be more efficient and spool up that turbo faster. If there's anything in the way that's restricting your flow, it's going to be reducing your performance and you don't want that. This is the sealant that I'm going to use on there. I use this stuff on my manifold gasket and it did work really good. Um, here, since I don't want to spray right onto my manifold because I don't feel like masking it off, I'm just going to spray some in a cup and then brush it onto the manifold and the turbo.
So to recap, by opening up that wastegate port, you're allowing more exhaust to flow through it, and this will make it easier to hold boost at lower, more reasonable levels with these cheap turbos. On some more expensive turbos, you may run into problems with this, but it's a lot more likely on eBay stuff like this. Also, by porting the turbo to the manifold, you're preventing restrictions there and once again just allowing for better flow out of your engine. This could promote faster spool up and you're just going to have a better time if you do this. If I knew that I was going to have as big of an issue as I did controlling my boost, I would have done this right when I got this eBay turbo, but I decided to try it without it and it wasn't great. You can see the results of this in a future upcoming video once I get this car back on the road for the year, but for now I still have some more projects to go like a differential and a clutch upgrade, so stick around so you don't miss that. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and if you learned something, and subscribe for more. I hope you stick around for the next one. Take care.